All right, start of turn two. Um, there were still a lot of good tribes available. Uh, pretty much everybody, I think, managed to select something they can't be unhappy about. Uh, now, the first player, first of all, the U.S. is determined entirely randomly, and they get a random amount of additional troops. They got 17 additional troops. Uh, they get a cannon, which I didn't give them. And they can place these on the board as actions. Um, as new column plays, and they get a random leader out of this pool, of which both, Mac well, Mackenzie is probably their best uh, bet. Grierson's not bad. But again, they don't get to choose who leads what. In terms of what they got uh, on the board for the turn, it's not too great. Uh, he's not bad. And he's not too good. Um, now, in terms of the Indian players, well, whoever got the least victory points total, American or Indian, um, uh, gets to go first. And then we go clockwise, but we go the kind of clockwise that I like, which is the opposite of clockwise. Uh, I just do that solitaire. Um, no big deal there. Anyway, uh, so the, this guy's going to go first, and I'm not sure what he's going to play, but... I haven't dealt out the shaman cards yet anyway. So, but that's that's where we are starting and I'm not gonna go into too much detail until interesting things happen. After one time around the board, uh, the Cheyenne showed up, whacked a mine in Colorado. You'll see the US has devoted itself to Colorado. Right now it's got enough points to get statehood, uh, assuming nothing happens. Um, the U.S. played a new column in Colorado to help defend that and one over in Nevada. They didn't play any of their existing columns. Um, the Apaches showed up and attacked in California, knocked one of the mines out. Uh, what else do we have of interest? The Nez Pierce showed up, attacked in Nevada, where they were whacked pretty hard by McKenzie, who is one of the new columns and driven back. They're now at one point, uh, or no, three points, sorry. But that's low enough that they might go on reservation. And finally, uh, the person with the most points, uh, no, no, the guy with the Apache has the most, um, used one of his extra tribes. He didn't get to play any of the tribes uh, that he picked for good points. So he took the Klamath and drove them into California to attack a mine, and there uh, he failed, but uh, Sumner attacked him. He was unable to get away, but he ended up defeating Sumner and getting a point off that anyhow. Uh, some of the key events that were played during the turn, um, we got a peace chief that got played on the Comanches, I believe the U.S. did that, and I believe the last player played territorial problems which is bloody Kansas at this point since it's before the war. And that forced Kansas. Um, it's now in a position where the U.S. cannot play any card, uh, any uh, resources in or columns in Kansas. Uh, not too big a deal because Nevada's worth more and they probably can't make two, more than two states in a turn at this point. We'll see. Uh, anyway, even if they could... Nebraska is not that different from Kansas, so it's not a big deal. Second round of rounds, uh, the Cheyenne fail in a raid, but once again uh, defeating Grierson in this case. Um, the U.S. moved about a little bit um, into New Mexico, and they made an attack in California uh, against the uh, uh, Klamath. I don't think any points were gained there. Both sides, I think, lost one. But the Klamath might go on reservation now. Um, the Apaches finished off the California gold mine, so now all the mines, which are the big points, are gone. Um, the Cordelin and then the Shoshone both attacked in Oregon. Uh, sort of one-offs. Mackenzie's forces uh, fought, drove off at least one force. The Shoshone are okay. 
Cordelian, I think, are down to one strength point, so they might go on reservation. Uh, and that gave a point to the uh, U.S. Next time around in uh, Colorado, the uh, Southern Cheyenne begin to be active. They didn't get anything, but uh, the Arapaho, who went much later in the turn, uh, just before the end of the round, um, actually did kill the, uh, the one of the villages there. Um, the U.S. made an attack in Oregon against the Rogues, who aren't actually controlled by anyone, but might send them on a reservation. Uh, the Bannock showed up and attacked in Nevada, uh, trying to prevent that from going to statehood. The Comanche got rid of their peace chief with a uh, tribal unrest card and managed to uh, attack a town in Texas, which is worth five points. So that's a big boost for them. And then, as I said, the Arapaho showed up. Uh, nothing new on the events that's exciting. So at the end of the rounds, uh, Cheyenne didn't manage to do much more. They're all that he played. Uh, U.S. moved back into Texas to help defend it. Moved one of his columns into Fort in California. There's only one strength point in there, he figured. That would be a good idea. Uh, another mine showed up, this time in Arizona, which caused the, fi the fifth player to play the Yavapai tribe to try to knock that out. Um, didn't get any points for that. Uh, the Comanche failed in their attack over in Texas. And then the only really exciting thing that happened, the Arapaho, uh, over here, went in Colorado and knocked out a town, and that dropped Colorado before below the amount needed to go to statehood. So the U.S. will get less points um, than they would have otherwise. End of the second turn. Um, most of the Indian players made right around eight points. I think one made nine. Uh, the guy who was in the lead, actually. Uh, the U.S., on the other hand, pulled, what, a dozen points? Uh, one state, which is worth six, the two points during the turn, and then four points for two more tribes going on reservation, the Klamath and Nez Pierce. 